storm is brewing in South Dakota. Sorry to get that. Southwest 1772, right And it's moving swiftly into Minnesota. Bringing with it well, rain. Thank you for that, by the stone. I appreciate that. Thunder and wind. A mass exodus is taking place from one social media website to another. MySpace, that's that good still shit. Some survivors left behind. Oh, anyone remember MySpace music? Bangers like Broken Side? Do we have any old MySpace veterans in here? Anyone remember these guys? Because this was the shit. I even made a Gears of War montage to the Get Crunk song. Yeah, this was popular music back in the day. But I think the one most people remember him for is this music video. I was actually thinking about them the other day. They made music all the way up until like 2019, if you can believe that. Album shares. Pretty pictures. This one doesn't look any different. Oh, I loved old MySpace music. The user sent to a Shit was great. And it's disguised in a coat that makes it look normal. But the last two letters... Is the 15 a reference? Crabcore? True. They're prompted to install a video player update. This unsuspecting computer is now a zombie, connected to a mesh of other half-dead machines spread all throughout the planet. I don't remember Nightcore being that popular. Simply as you are watching Disrupt. Congratulations, you won. An antivirus company announces a discovery. Is it McAfee? God rest his soul. Typically, URLs are hosted on a single web server through a single internet protocol address. If one is found to be malicious, it's fairly easy to chop it down from the root by blocking the IP. But these URLs are utilizing a tactic known as fast flux. <laughs> in a fast cool. flux network, the IP address of the domain name is constantly switched out, making it near impossible to find the core of the infection. Perfect for the first stage of self-propagation over the dates. In this time period, we see variants appearing that are created from the original MySpace exploit. Skype is literally a Microsoft malware. Targets Twitter. I hate Skype. Shit's garbage. Always has been. Makes its way onto the Macintosh ecosystem. It spreads not only through social media messages, but right under our noses. An ordinary website. <gasps> no, not video you games! Download files from oh my god. Coopface covers the otherwise safe download button with an HTML iframe. This sends a PDF file to the user that when opened, scans the computer. It's searching for a file transfer protocol. If found, it will send out a message to the other bots who will subsequently use the exploited username and password to make a new home within its victim. Damn, what an asshole. Each newly infected host, the botnet grows larger, creating a decentralized, untraceable network that turns left, turns right, goes up and goes down on the whim of whoever has the steering wheel. Dave, I'm just in your Zoom with how to protect your computer, Dave. Yeah, Ron, it's really scary how easily it can infect your computer. In fact, we had a computer expert show us, show us, show us, show us. Oh my God. What? Is this a custom animation and is this? Such the high production. It's I haven't seen Lighthouse yet, no. And the most popular Not website yet. in the world is more than 17 million people use the site every month to explore a new frontier known as the internet. Yahoo answers. At 7 p.m. on Monday, December 8th, Yahoo is hijacked. Anyone who opens the browser. 
message reveals that the computer of every single person who's visited Yahoo in the past Whoa. month has been infected with a worm. And on Christmas Day, in less than three weeks, the bomb will detonate and destroy millions of contaminated computer systems. That is, unless the hijacker's one demand is met. Oof. Anger erupts. Who the fuck is Kevin? The following days, protests Let him out. out on the streets across the United States. They set up camp outside federal courthouses, and from New York to California, people call into radio stations to cry out the phrase in real life and in video Do you games. Have anything else to say? Yeah. Free Kevin. Oh. It's now just one week until Christmas, and most are asking. <laughs> So is the hacker just a memer? I'm guessing that's the uh, conclusion. He hoists himself up and looks through the bars on his windows. Oh, you give sub admin. I'm not watching the Walton Files. That shit is not for me. It's just Five Nights at Freddy's fanfic. Kevin isn't a terrorist. He isn't a mafia boss, and he's not here because he wiretapped the NSA or blackmailed FBI agents. Authorities say he poses an even greater danger. Because with a single phone call, they say, he can dial into the NORAD and access the nuclear arsenal what? of the United States of America. The event of nuclear weapons That's a huge the oversight, then. An prankster. Or Kevin could be the world's most dangerous cyber terrorist. A man who has North America at his fingertips. To free or not to free. That is the question. Uh, I say let him out. Call his bluff. This and if he's not bluffing, is well, this is what it is. Key. And this is that same Windows registry key modified by Kubeface. When a computer wants to connect to a website, it goes through a domain management system. Tier one proxy? Or DNS. This is typically provided by an internet service provider. A VPN circumvents this. Oh, is that true, Rafa? That makes sense. That handles the traffic toward the user types. Maybe. Coop I don't know about Sapphire mining. Coop Face is doing something similar, but instead of directing traffic to the website in its true form, it repaints road signs, changes GPS directions, and guides the user to wherever it pleases. YouTube, Wikipedia, PayPal, all resolve to IP addresses employed by the Command and Control Center. This is how the Kube makes its money. Right there. When that user clicked the link, Kubeface instantly shot his browser through a number of affiliate advertising networks. Very smart. Instead of the machine sending HTTP GET to Google as it normally does, an infected machine sends HTTP GET to Kubeface. He <laughs> responds with a list of affiliated links. It's only after receiving those links that the machine correctly sends HTTP GET to Google, who then returns with the legit results. The first result corresponds to the first affiliate link, and when clicked, for just a brief moment, an advertisement. After that process, the used affiliate link is scrubbed, and a new one takes its place. These systems may offer I two don't bucks per get thousand it. users that click the affiliate link. Multiply that by hundreds of thousands of infected bots across the planet, clicking links all day. And Where would they get the affiliate links, though? They'd have to be in, con in contact with the companies, right? The victim may now notice that something feels off. Their loading times are slower. Toolbars keep appearing out of nowhere. And just in time, a helping hand is offered. Similar to the Google search, a response is sent to Kube's command and control center. It responds with a list of antivirus software downloads, picks one, and displays it on the desktop. After the user pays, their PC remains infected, and command and control Damn it. gets a paycheck. I've been scammed. We live in a world of bots. 
toolbars where really were awful. Beings come from. Alan Turing, a 20th century mathematician, creates the Turing test. In the experiment, oh, sweet. human Thanks, has Proxy. a text-based conversation with a computer and another human. If he can't tell who is the computer and who is, that is who this the is woman, about, Arifum? then the computer has passed the test. Now we've flipped this. Instead of us, the human telling computers apart from humans, computer needs to figure out who's you and who's me and who is its robotic kin. I am super lost. What does this have to do with Kevin? Yes, you are a robot and you were named as Clever. I am a robot. Yes, I know. Together we are robots. I'm not a robot. I'm a unicorn. Clever bots In fucking the great. Coopface uses a small portion of manually created accounts to spread initially. But now, as the infrastructure grows, it needs a way to create thousands of fake accounts to ensnarl thousands of more victims. Completely automated public Turing test to tell computers and humans apart. I had no Only idea that's what it's... Would be is that actually what it stands for? Bot program. But Coopface has found a clever workaround. First, it sends the following command to Facebook. The login and password are encoded via an encrypted scheme that involves reading the letters, their corresponding AC values, and comparing that to a successive string of numbers Thanks, give from zero to one, to two, to three, to four, to... Encrypted becomes unencrypted. New account information is sent to the social media site. The Thanks, social media Sam site K. responds with another packet containing a blank bio, birthday, no, that's not true, books, Sam. activities. Kube autofills this with username. randomly generated info that feels just realistic enough. Next, the site will ask for CAPTCHA. To circumvent this, the CAPTCHA This is my biggest is complaint about Disrupt. Individual they tell like 10 different stories without ever connecting them. Two things happen. So this has nothing to do with Kevin logged, now, right? And the CAPTCHA for the new minion is complete. I hate it. Face deploys it feels so fucking comes. disjointed, and it makes and it so hard to follow the story. Facebook, and the army grows ever larger. No, it never came into play last time. It was literally two separate Cyber stories last time. Uncover an irregularity. The connection of interest. Hopefully, is they connect them this time. I guess. Hosted by Coriax in the UK. The data flowing in and out of one of these servers matches observed data by Coopface. The command and control centers are wiped out, and the bots are left wandering without direction. Hundreds of new command and control centers appear, which ushers in Coopface's peak with an estimated 600, infected machines. As we sub Dustin in the prime becoming the unraveling of Coopface is delivered through the very same websites it previously exploited. An Apache HTTP client is used to control files to and from a web server. For the most part, it can be functioned anonymously unless a specific option is left untouched. This option will drop breadcrumbs that display to any visitor what type of files are being transferred to and from the botnet on the daily. This and then what? metadata shows it was taken with an iPhone on September 15, 2009. Thanks, Yusuf Khan Air. This Dustin. is a daily backup of the Kube Face command and control software. Inside, an IP stands out. This is programmed to automatically send a daily SMS update to five numbers. Updates that show exactly how Thanks, much Yusuf, profit the network is pulling in. The numbers are searched. One is found. An online marketplace for vehicle sales. License plate in full view. Another market. We we got them. Sphinxes. We got them the too. Fuck the cats. Is registered on a number of websites. The same BMW is found on Flickr. Also the cat. One of the found email addresses on his social media page points to a corporate email called Mobsoft. 
website is Thanks for the five gift subs, Fox Trot, and the resub these nuts. Thank you. Today. Job listings. The numbers on it both match the PHP found in Coop. Their names are cross referenced with their respective social media accounts. And here, they posted their vacation pictures publicly. Mm hmm. Facebook doxes their full names and pictures. They are dubbed Alibaba and Four. And now, in a rather anticlimactic peak, the Coop Face Command and Control Centers simply go offline. Okay, we got them, I guess. From that point on to our current day and age, Coop Face's original Command and Control Center has never been reactivated. Alibaba and Four are off the grid. And the zombie army <laughs> remains dormant. Got him! <laughs> Got him! <laughs> so uh, I'm still a little lost. Yeah, I don't fuck. I I don't fucking understand. If it would just stick with one fucking story. Good evening, citizens of the metaverse. And welcome to the Electronic Simulation Showcase show. Today show. we're looking at the sports car of... Something like two dozen people show up. Each one almost as much of a nerd as the worst of a ham radio enthusiast. Thanks, we sub salmon and the gifts. The some conversation inevitably gets around to one of my favorite targets, Cosmos. The Pacific Telephone Mission System that could bestow so much power on any freaker who could access it. As we started talking, I realized the building that houses Cosmos is nearby. The guard is a young guy. I say, hey, how you doing? We're out late, I work here, I wanted to show my friends where I work. What the fuck is this? He says, sure, just sign in. Doesn't even ask for an ID. Smooth. We've been calling departments and analyzing phone company operations for so long that we know exactly where the Cosmos employees work. Room 108. A folder on the wall holds up sheets of paper listing dial-up numbers for every wire center in Southern California. Armed with this list and login credentials, I'd have the ability to control any phone line in Pacific Telephone Southern California service area. Hello. I can't believe our luck. We should have left then. But I spot a set of Cosmos manuals and the temptation is irresistible. I tell the guys, let's take the manuals to a copy shop, run off a copy for each of us, then return the manuals before people start coming back to work in the morning. It was All the right. most stupid decision of my early life. We drive around looking for a copy shop but can't find one. It's 2 a.m. So I take the manuals home with me. But I have a bad feeling about them. <laughs> So I throw it all in some trash bags and give them to my accomplice. Tell so, him but why? Why? Like, what was all this for? An unknown teenager has hacked a new network known as No Red. It's an organization that provides aerospace warning and protection for North America. And this kid infiltrated the system just to have a look around. The move is so bold that it inspires the film War Games. Oh, really? That's actually pretty cool. Journalist John Markov gets in touch with Kevin. I love War Games. I used to love, love that movie. On hackers named Cyberpunk. Um, game sucks. He's gained a reputation as a master of social engineering. It's the art of deceiving people into sharing valuable and confidential information for fraudulent purposes. But he's not interested in the money on offer. He wants to maintain a low profile, so he refuses to. Yeah, I understand this is Kevin now, much but the why? Of John Markov. Like I, I, I don't understand at all. And what does this have to do with Coop Face? Kevin pulls out of the Stephen S. Wise Temple, where he works as a receptionist. In his rearview mirror, he thinks he sees a group of three men following him in a Ford Crown Victoria. He pulls a U-turn. Sure enough, 
they do the same. Kevin speeds down the I-405 and the car races after him. Suddenly, one of the men places a cop car flasher on the roof of the car, and now the sirens are crying out. Kevin pulls over. The officers rush up. They scream. Kevin is dragged out, handcuffed. His car is ransacked, but there's no signs of any bomb. <laughs> You're not gonna find it! He's hauled to the station. The officers don't find a logic bomb, but they know about a crime Kevin committed. A friend told the police everything. He's sentenced 12 months in prison, followed by three years of supervised release. He sits in the courtroom. All right, they got him. He's still his 10 attorneys minutes. plead with a judge that his hacking is an addiction rather than criminal behavior. They say the Thanks only one void of nothing, not a prison cell. Can't click links. Kevin rises and pleads his case to the judge. By now, he's a veteran in deception. The judge agrees and orders that Kevin serve his sentence in a halfway house for those with compulsive. Oh, disorder. he's hacking the court Kevin system. As he's listening to the ruling, he was arrested for tricking his way into computer system, and now he deceives the judge into thinking that he's the victim of his own crimes. It's a few weeks until supervised release ends, and the demon on his shoulder is whispering. He starts learning about Pacific Bell, a telephone company based in California. An idea appears. If he gets caught, he'll be sent to jail, but if he doesn't, then he'd have fooled the authorities right under their noses. No! No! Soon, he has all the passwords and credentials. Fooled them how? What? How does it, How did he fool them? These voicemails. What do you Kevin's like? On what? Run for two years, he loses a hundred pounds. When he learns that how a criminal walks is the number one way they're recognized, he puts pebbles in his shoes to change his stride. He uses over a dozen different names. His favorite is Eric Wise. He's the prime Angie in the resubdues. He begins a crime spree that infiltrates the world's biggest companies, Nokia. The companies say the damage from the hacks totals. Kevin sips his coffee as he reads the paper, and suddenly, a chill passes down. What is he hacking though? Like, what what is he and doing to those companies? Positions outside the house in California. They see their targets. So Kevin gets into Nokia, then what? Burst in and draw their weapons, and the man denies that he's Kevin Mitnick. He's a Middle Eastern immigrant. Doesn't even own a computer. Steals money. More How? Two thousand kilometers away. So he gets into Nokia's what? His paper to the ground. Intern's laptop, and he's stealing money. And on the front page of the New York Times, Kevin is adamant the stories in the articles are lies. He never hacked into NORAD or wiretapped the NSA. But if you believe Kevin, then you shouldn't trust anything you've heard so far about Kevin. He takes on mythical status overnight. The little known prankster is now public enemy number one of cyberspace. Kevin walks the streets of Seattle oh. for days. Many of the passing faces on the sidewalk seem to be staring straight back at him. He hears the faint sound of a helicopter in the sky. He feels his heart beginning to thump. No one seems to notice the helicopter, but they do notice Kevin. He hurries into the courtyard of an apartment complex and uses the tall trees as cover peering through the leaves. Kevin talks So do I believe this now? And burst into a full I was just told not to believe Kevin. He gets away. But from what? It's so much style. Like it's so high effort. But it cannot deliver an actual cohesive narrative. He's finalizing plans to leave for this is TV two in a row, three, I think. And suddenly, like I love the style of these videos, but my fucking god, it it, it can't tell a story. Your security technique will be defeated. Your technique is no good. To someone like him, the attack and subsequent taunts are an act of war. He sets up a series of stealth monitoring posts and creates his own software. Is that about the same thing, Arefum? He waits in silence until the alarm is triggered. He traces the intruder to a computer modem connected to a cellular telephone somewhere 
on the East Coast. A man steps out onto his balcony in Raleigh, North Carolina. Inside These aren't just stock images and shit, they have their own little custom animations they play. It's very high effort shit. The FBI agents take their position. But none of it actually house. helps with the story. It's just target sitting inside. Random the sentences that don't even fucking connect to each other. Street. The agents burst in and draw their weapons. But find nothing. The man furiously denies that he's Kevin Mitnick. He's so convincing the FBI agents are about to leave. But then an agent notices an old ski jacket in the cupboard. He empties the pockets, and out falls a paste-up. Legacy Media pitches up their circus tents outside. The most wanted computer hacker is behind bars. Kevin shares one large holding cell with 60 other inmates. He doesn't eat for two days, because the food isn't kosher. Inside... And then Coop face on the defendant. Cool picture. Kevin is charged with 14 counts of wire wow. fraud, eight counts of possession of unauthorized access devices, interception of wire or electronic communications, and causing damage to a computer. When Kevin is led away from the court, Tsutomu calls out from the front row. Kevin looks back at his nemesis. The one man who finally saw through the lies and deceptions to find him. Who? He nods, says nothing, and walks away. His appeals for bail are churned down by every single court in the U.S., including the Supreme. Kevin says the beefed-up charges are an injustice, and his treatment is a denial of his constitutional rights. But why won't anyone believe him? He has one last idea. But then, a group of officers storm into the cell and throw him into solitary confinement. You skipped half. I didn't skip shit, I skipped an ad. I skipped his ad break and merch plug. I didn't skip shit. What are you talking about? I didn't miss anything. What a weird excuse. It's just a really fucking poorly constructed narrative. Christmas Day passes. I don't get what's so confusing, I understand. Who's his nemesis? They just mentioned his nemesis like he was a huge part of the story, and that was the literal first time we heard of him. I'm assuming it's the guy who was spearheading the operation to find him. But that's just an assumption. So who's his nemesis then? Pop quiz. And why is he all of a sudden a central character to make a little animation about him? His name is Joe Clearly. His name is Satoyu. I think. I don't know. That's, That's what I fucking thought. The hack on Yahoo so you're not following it like you claimed. Members of the Free Kevin movement. There was no logic bomb. After four years of prison and solitary confinement. Kevin pleads guilty to four counts of wire fraud, two counts of computer fraud, and one count of illegally intercepting a wire communication. Uh, I didn't think of the consequences when I was engaging in this behavior. I just did it. I'd, I'd, I'd copy the code, store it on a computer, and go right on to the next without even reading the code. Interesting. You know, and that complete, a complete different motivation of somebody who's really out for financial gain or a foreign uh, country or a competitor trying to right. obtain, you know, uh, information like, you know, like economic espionage, for right. instance. You know, I hate to suggest the waste of your talent, but as I listen to you, I think you'd make a great lawyer. Well, uh, I don't know if you're convicted of a felony if they'd allow That's you to harder, be admitted to the bar. To do. <laughs> Kevin Mitnick is in Metal Gear. prison after nearly five years. When Kevin was on his crime spree, his hacking exploits seemed like mythology to the outside world. But by the time the sun hits his face, the world needs his skills. So 
Soon after his release, he testifies before the Senate and advises on how to better protect computer systems from attacks. All right, Kevin was freed. And then it all ties into Koob Face. So I really like sleep, and the thing that I do like about sleep is that it's an alternate reality. Nothing is impossible in sleep. So where did Koob Face play into anything with Kevin's story, or at all in this entire narrative? Where does that fit? It's just two separate stories. There's a Kevin story and there's a Koob Face story, and none of them really connect to each other other than Koob Face with the free Kevin meme. It's like, I hate that. Like, if you're gonna make a video, like, this should be two separate things instead of convoluting and watering down this whole thing. They did that in the last one, too. It makes it fucking impossible to follow the narrative, and it just seems all disjointed and everywhere. It's, it makes no sense. It makes absolutely no fucking sense. So much effort, and then dropping the ball in the most important aspect. Thanks to the Prime Shiny. It's such a shame. I really love the style of the channel. But they absolutely cannot fucking tell any story at all. It just gets so pretentious and wrapped up in itself.